Okay, so this is how to remove old Linux kernels when in Linux Mint using its update manager. Other distros like looks like Ubuntu and uh, I know Pop OS, maybe other Ubuntu's. Um, what they do is they kind of whenever they do a kernel update, they remove the last. The, you know, one or two, and they only leave two at a time. Linux Mint doesn't do that. You start getting a real pile. Okay, so you update up, you launch Update Manager. I did it from the bar. Um, everything's up to date. We're going to do a refresh just in case. And yes, everything's up to date. Now we're going to view Linux kernels. Okay. Got nothing in the 4.4 range. Got one in the 4.8 and I'm going to keep it because every once in a while you run into something that was, oh, you know, I got two in the 4.10. I'm going to get rid of that one. So I'm going to remove. Say yes. In my password. Let's watch the details. This takes a little bit, but I think I'm gonna let the video run. You can skip ahead if you want, but you might want to see the messages. You might want to see what what it's doing. By the way, you notice here it's rewriting grub configuration files. going to do one more. And there, got a whole bunch here. Um, by the way, 4.15's available, so if you like the latest and greatest, you can go grab the latest and greatest. I'm going to remove this one. And there it is. So I did two. Um, you don't obviously have to watch both. I don't probably should have told you that earlier. Um, anyways, I'm going to close. Uh, I can reboot now, but I don't really need to. Um, let me look at something. I think you can also use this. I thought you could use this to 
make a different one active. All you could do is, no, you can't, you can't even remove the active one because that's the one you want. So what you would do is you would boot grub and, and then use the, oh, what's it called? The advanced features, um, <coughs> advanced boot, <coughs> and it gives you a list of which kernels you want to boot from. So, it, say this one was giving you heartburn, you would boot from this one, then come around and this would show active when you boot it up, then you could delete this one, remove it, and, and then it would fix grub, and then this would be the default one. Anyways, there it is. Have a nice day.